Hi there, boys and girls. This is Miss Rickfelder, and today we're going to be looking again at dividing multi-digit numbers. We're going to be working with four-digit dividends by three-digit divisors. In the top right corner of this page, you'll see the standard written again, which is to fluently divide multi-digit numbers using the standard algorithm. So we've talked about this before. You should have already watched um, two or three videos before this one. So you want to make sure that this is not the first division video that you're watching from me. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is hedge your paper with 6.ns.2, divide four-digit by three-digit numbers. And um, you're also going to want to have that 6.ns.2 in the top right corner. And then you want to write the first problem, which is going to be 8,553 divided by 202. Once you've done that, you're going to you are going to want to write the steps for this division problem. Again, just like the other videos, I'm going to go through one full problem, then I'm going to have you do one in which I show you the answer, and then you're going to have your problem of the day. So let's go ahead and look at what we have here. So the first thing I've done here is I've underlined the 855 in our dividend and the 202 in our divisor. So please make sure that you understand that the divisor is on the outside, it's the 202, and the dividend is what's on the inside, um, it is 855, the part that we're looking at. So I just want to make sure that you have that vocabulary because that is going to be important. So as you can see right here, it says since our divisor is three digits, we look at the first three digits of our dividend. About how many times does 200 go into 800? Now notice I'm not asking about 202 and 855 because really when you're dealing with the first three numbers, you're really just looking for an estimate and then you want to check it. I should see what I'm getting ready to write here in black. I should see it for your work as well. Now there are some problems where you won't even really need to check it to make sure, but you should. And then there are other problems where you may need to try two or three different, um, you know, different numbers that you could work with before you find the right one. Since we're working with three digit divisors, usually your first guess is probably right. So right here, we have guessed that it's about four. So then we do the actual multiplication 202 times four to make sure that we haven't gone over or it's not too short. So we get 808. So now we can officially write four in our quotient which I've done up here, just above the five. Now it's important, especially because we're working with three digit divisors, that you make sure that you put the four above the five. So that four needs to go above the five because it is, you're saying that four times 202 is eight, so we'll go into 855. So now we're going to do the multiplication, which gives us 808, and we're gonna put it right underneath that 855. Then we're gonna subtract 855 minus 808, and we get 47. And then we're going to bring down the three. So we're all finished with this first round for the problem. And then we're going to repeat. So now we're going to, you'll see me rewrite the problem again. I'm going to go ahead and get it all set up for the next round of division. And then now it says, now think about how many times does 202 go into 473? So again, um, that's going to be 202 times 2, which gives us 404. So then we do the multiplication there. And then we're going to go ahead and subtract the 404 minus, I'm sorry, scratch that, the 473 minus 404, which will give us 69. We want to make sure then, it says since there are no more, zero, um, no more numbers to bring down, we need to add decimal, decimal, zero. Okay, so we're, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So you just add a decimal in the quotient first, then a decimal at the end of the dividend, and then a zero. Because remember, we're now in sixth grade, so we're not working with remainders anymore. We're going to be dividing out to two decimal places. So the directions said divide to two decimal places. I'm not sure if you saw that or not. Let's go ahead and go back just to make sure. So it says find the quotient here on this first page to two decimal places. So we want to make sure that we do that. All right. All right, so here we are now again. Um, we have dropped our zero down, so now we need to repeat the process again. So let's go to our next place. Whoops, whoops, whoops. All right, so that's just me catching up on the problem. So this first thing that we're going to do now is decide. We want to think about how many times does 200 go into 600? And again, this is just an estimate, so we don't need to even use 690 because these numbers are so large because of that three-digit divisor. So now we know that it's going to be about three. So you can see my black multiplication. I should see your black multiplication off to the side as well. 202 times 3 is going to give us 606. So this is where we're going to do that exact amount. So now we put the 606 underneath the 690. We make sure to put our 3 there in the quotient. And then we're going to subtract. We have 690 minus 606, and we're left with 84. And then 
we are going to add another zero and bring down, and actually I forgot right here to put in that 84, so I'm gonna put that right there. So we're adding another zero and we're bringing it down, and so now we have 840. And then we repeat the process over again. So now we've got 840. We wanna think about how many times does 202, or 200 rather, go into 800. So that's gonna be about four. So then we do that multiplication just to make sure, and then we put the four up there in the quotient. So now we're at 42.34. We're gonna go ahead and multiply four times 202, which gives us the 808. Then we're gonna subtract out that 808 from the 840, which leaves us with 32. And since we're rounding to, the, to two decimal places, which is the nearest hundredth, we need to add one more zero to have our back door so that we can round appropriately. Um, so now we're gonna add that other zero. Notice I've crossed out the repeat because we're not actually gonna repeat the whole process. We just now need to quickly check how many times 202 goes into 320, and that's gonna be one time. Now, all of these pages you should have had, um, you should have been writing on. So if you notice the little written pencil at the top left corner of each page, you need to be writing each one of these. So now at the bottom, you'll see quickly check. So now we're gonna put that one up there in the quotient just above that third zero. Now we're gonna to go to our last step for this particular problem, and that's gonna to be to round appropriately, or rounding correctly in this case. So what you can see here is I've started with the original answer that we got, which is 42.341. Now a lot of students will just continue to divide and continue to divide. You wanna make sure before you are continuing to divide that you know how many places you're gonna be rounding to, because you don't need to divide out six, seven places if you're only gonna be rounding to the hundredths. So now, since we know we're gonna round to the hundredths, we're gonna go ahead and underline that four because it's in the hundredths column. Then we're gonna draw our blue back door, which I've done here. And then we're gonna see who's knocking on that back door. Whoops, 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 too far. Hold on one second. Then we're gonna see who's knocking on that back door. The back door, um, the person, or the number rather, that's at the back door is one. So that one means that the four stays the same. So now we have 42.34 and I have boxed our final answer. So you should do that on your paper as well. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and go on to the it's your turn problem. So what I want you to do now is go ahead and write down the problem and pause the video now, and then I would like you to go ahead and work the problem out. When you push play again, you're gonna be able to check all the, um, you're gonna be able to check the answer. So make sure that you pause the video now, please. All right, great, welcome back. I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly go through this with you. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is find out how many times 170 goes into 458. So these numbers aren't exactly easy, so I'm gonna think about what I know about 150, and I know 150 plus 150 is 300, so I'm gonna try 170 times three. So I'm gonna do that off to the side, and I get 510. So I've gone over, so that means it's gonna be 170 times two which will give me 340. So just below the three, the 458, I'm gonna write 340. Whoops. First, I'm gonna write the two above the 458. Then I'm going to write the 340. Then we're left with 118. Now we need to figure out how many times 170 goes into 1180. So I know that if it's multiplied by 10, that's 1700, so I'm pretty far off there. So let's think about what we know, let's see. Hmm. I would just try maybe six. So when I multiply 170 times six, I get 1,020. So I should probably try one more time to go up to seven just to see how far that goes. So close, we got to 1190. So that means that um, it actually is six. So we put the six in our quotient and then we're gonna bring down or we're gonna put that 1,020 in right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and subtract the 1,020 from the 1180. And now we don't have any more numbers to bring down, so we're gonna go ahead and add a decimal, decimal zero. All right, so now we have 1600. Remember before I said 170 times 10 was 1700, so let's go ahead and try 170 times nine. So it looks like nine is gonna give us for, um, 1530, so we're gonna go ahead and write the nine there in our quotient. Then we're gonna to subtract that 1530 from the 1600 and we get 70 add another zero to bring down. And then before I look to see, um, before I start multiplying again to see what if 170 goes into 700, I'm just gonna look at what I already have. I already have 170 times three is 510, so I'm gonna try 170 times four. And I'm glad I did because that brought me all the way to 680. Then I have 20 left over and I need to drop down one more zero so that I have my rounding place. And thankfully that one's easy, 170 goes into 200 one time. And you can see we've rounded appropriately here. So now we get a final answer of 26.94. So now let's go ahead and look at our problem of the day. 
On your piece of um, half sheet of lined loose leaf paper that you did not tear out of your composition book, you want to make sure to write problem of the day number two at the top in the center, just like I've written here. You want to make sure right now to have your name, date, and period on it because you're not going to have any time to write that when you get to class. And then um, you can see here in this bubble, it says bring to class, finished, folded, and ready to turn in. So good luck with that, and I look forward to seeing you our next class period.